Welcome to worship. I'm the Reverend Rhonda Hain, pastor of St. Paul's Lutheran Church and Christian Day School. Today is the first day of Lent, a season that helps prepare our hearts and lives for the resurrection joy of Easter. We know that confession helps prepare our hearts. And so today's Ash Wednesday service is a service of confession and repentance. And we begin in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.
reading from the prophet Joel, chapter 2, verses 12 and 13. Yet even now, says the Lord, return to me with all your heart, with fasting, with weeping, and with mourning. Rent your hearts and not your clothing. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Grace, mercy, and peace be yours from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Friends, Ash Wednesday reminds us that new life can rise up out of the ashes of our burnt up hopes and dreams. Remember the legend of the phoenix? The phoenix bursts into flame at the end of its life. And then the phoenix does what? Hatches again from an egg that emerges up from the ashes. The egg is a new beginning, a new opportunity for a full and meaningful life. For us Christians, it's an opportunity to return to God for a new beginning. How many of you have read the Harry Potter series? Many books, seven of them. Maybe you've watched even the movies. Do you remember the phoenix called Fox in the story? The tears of this dying bird were life enhancing. They had the power to reverse poison, the toxicity of the life destroying powers of sin and evil. It seems to me that our tears, our sorrow for the pain we've caused God and the world can also be healing. For our sorrow can open our hearts and lives to God. Our sorrows can lead us to confess our sins, to say that we're sorry for our mistakes, for our, our wrongdoings. Our confession turns our hearts to God. Our confession opens us to the healing power of God's love. That's why we remember God's promises. We remember God's promises amidst all the pain and the sorrow, the difficulty that we deal with this side of eternity. And so the prophet Joel declares in today's Old Testament reading, he says, return, return to the Lord your God, for the Lord is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. That's who our God is. That's why we can return. Imagine the fullness of who God is, gracious, compassionate, slow to anger, abounding in steadfast love. That's who we are turning toward. Jesus says in Matthew's Gospel, chapter 11, he says, Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Jesus also says, I tell you the truth, you will weep and mourn while the world rejoices. You will grieve, but your grief will turn to joy. Sometimes that's how we feel when we're in a sorrowful place or a difficult place, that other people might be happy and enjoying life, and, and what about us? Sometimes we, we turn in on ourselves and, and weep and mourn, well, everything seems to be going well round about us. But the good news is you will grieve but your grief will be turned to joy. Jesus says this in John's Gospel, the 16th chapter. And so friends, in this Lenten season, we remember God's promises. We have more opportunities actually to, to read devotional booklets, to, to learn more about the faith, to buoy ourselves up, to renew our hearts and minds so that we can indeed turn to God. Friends, by faith, we affirm that new life, new possibilities, new beginnings are possible. We affirm that we can rise up like the phoenix from the ashes. That's why we confess our sins. We turn to God from our selfish and self-centered ways. 
we turn to God, to God's ways. We exchange our focus for God's focus, our priorities for God's priorities. And when we do so, we truly live. Let it be so. Amen. Friends, our exhortation to confession is found in the bulletin. Siblings in Christ, God created us to experience joy and communion with him, to love humanity, and to live in harmony with all of his creation. But sin separates us from God, our neighbors, and creation. And so we do not enjoy the life our creator intended for us. Also by our sin, we grieve our father who does not desire us to come under his judgment, but to turn to him and live. As disciples of the Lord Jesus, we are called to struggle against everything that leads us away from the love of God and neighbor. Repentance, fasting, prayer, and works of love, the discipline of Lent, help us to wage our spiritual warfare. We invite you, therefore, to commit yourselves to this struggle and confess your sins, asking God for strength to journey faithfully through the Lenten season. The confession of sins is found in the bulletin. Most holy and merciful Father, we confess to you and to one another and to the whole communion of saints in heaven and on earth that we have sinned by our own fault in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart, mind, and strength. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We have not forgiven others as we have been forgiven. Have mercy on us, Lord. We have been deaf to your call to serve as Christ served us. We have not been true to the mind of Christ. We have grieved your Holy Spirit. Have mercy on us, Lord. We confess to you, Lord, all our past unfaithfulness, the pride, hypocrisy, and impatience of our lives. We confess to you, Lord, our self-indulgent appetites and ways, and our exploitation of other people. We confess to you, Lord, our anger and our own frustration and envy of those more fortunate than ourselves. We confess to you, Lord, our love of worldly goods and comforts and our dishonesty in daily life and work. We confess to you, Lord, our negligence in prayer and worship and our failure to affirm faith in God. We confess to you, Lord, accept our repentance, Lord, for the wrongs we have done, for our blindness to human need and suffering, and our indifference to injustice and cruelty. Accept our repentance, Lord. For all false judgments, for uncharitable thoughts toward our neighbors, and for our prejudice and contempt toward those who differ from us. Accept our repentance, Lord. For our waste and pollution of your creation, and our lack of concern for those who come after us. Accept our repentance, Lord. Restore us, good Lord, and let your anger depart from us. Hear us, Lord, for your mercy is great. Amen. Accomplish in us, O God, the work of your salvation, that we may show forth your glory in the world. By the cross and passion of your Son, our Lord, bring us with all your saints to the joy of his resurrection. Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ does not desire the death of sinners, but rather that we turn from our sin and live. We ask God to grant us true repentance and the Holy Spirit, that what we do today would be pleasing in God's sight. May the days ahead be pure and holy, May we come to eternal joy through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. On this day of fasting and prayer, let us offer our prayers to God 
asking for the life God alone can give, and saying, hear our prayer. We pray for the church and for all Christians everywhere to, to observe a holy Lent. May our faith be nurtured through God's word, the sacraments, daily devotion reading, and prayer. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our nation and all the nations of the world, that those in authority will promote justice and people for all people, work together to heal divisions and restore the health and viability of the natural world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all in need of home and food, protection and companionship. We remember all who have lost their jobs and health insurance, those oppressed by corrupt governments and tyrannical dictators, those suffering from the ravages of war and famine, those displaced in refugee camps, those locked up in prisons, and all who live alone. Provide necessary resources, help, and strength to all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for healing for all who are sick and chronically ill, for all who are handicapped, institutionalized, and hospitalized. We remember all who are infected with COVID-19 and those who care for them, all who have died from the virus, and all families and friends in mourning. We remember those on our church prayer lists, especially Ellie, Jody, Gundrum, Zoya, Carolyn, Lucille, Barbara, Kirsten, Lillian, Bud, Lori, Nikki, Joan, Lorraine, Ben, Laura, Marie, Lori, Dwayne, Immacula, Irene, Maggie, Greg, Heather, the Grievous Lawn family, Helene, Julia, Luella, Eileen and family, Ellen and family, Linda, Jim, Bruce, Jordan, Cassie, Arlene and family, Helen, Michael, Cindy, Amanda, Patty, and Lee. We bring before the concerns of our hearts in this moment of silence. Bring healing, comfort, and help. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We remember those who have journeyed with Jesus and now rest in peace, especially Anna Hain, Joseph Kotek, and those we now name before you. Lisa Rameau's father, Jane Brandt, Ruth Semino, Salvatore Stapa, Linda Thompson-Smith. May Jesus' words and ways guide our journeys this side of eternity. And may we come to know God's abundant joy in this life and the next. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God, gather us all into your embrace during this Lenten season. Help us to be formed and transformed by the grace of your Holy Spirit, alive within us through baptism. We ask in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. And now receive the blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Go in Amen. peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Oh, 